Hey, it's Ponch here. Andrew Gallimore is on Joe Rogan. I want to use this opportunity to walk you through the basics of the Observe, Wait, Decide, Act loop. I'm going to use some parts of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast featuring Andrew Gallimore to do this. It's a great opportunity to learn about the OODA loop. Before we do that, if you're not familiar with Andrew Gallimore's work, Reality Switch Technologies, fantastic book that talks about attractors, the free energy principle, active inference, predictive processing, DMT, and a little bit about these entities that may be out there. And his new book is awesome as well, Death by Astonishment. That's what they're talking about on the podcast. Uh, if you're into DMT, understanding what that's about, psychedelic assisted therapies, understanding that there's some type of outside information, some news out there, some entity that has control. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a short clip. A couple of clips, I'm going to share with you a couple of slides. We're going to talk about what the real Observe, Orient, Decide, Act loop is using Andrew Gallimore's conversation with Joe Rogan. In fact, I will make it very, very clear that every Joe Rogan episode is about Observe, Orient, Decide, Act, and you'll see that here in a second. My, that's the explanation that makes sense to me, is that somehow DMT is gating access to some kind of that the flow of information from some kind of intelligent agent that is directing um, the DMT experience. So it's not a sensed world, it's not a kind of a dreamt world, it's actually a directed world. I always say you don't break through um, into the DMT world, the DMT world breaks through into you. It's like this intelligent agent has commandeered your neural machinery, the world building machinery of your brain, mm. and is, is directing um, everything that you see. It has complete control. It's interesting that you use the word construct rather than observe. Mm. So you're using you're using terminology that seems to indicate that you believe that you're constructing reality. Yes. Not that you're just observing reality. No, because... Okay, I want to start here. Joe was talking about the idea that we do not observe reality. Um, he's questioning the idea that we construct it. The truth is we do construct it. And this leads us to the bad OODA loop. So let's start here. This is bad OODA right here. Uh, we do not observe, orient, decide, and act. All right. That's that's not what the OODA loop is about. Anytime anybody teaches you the OODA loop or they try to talk about the OODA loop and they give you this, this is bullshit. This is nonsense. Just just run away. All right. It's, it's much deeper than that. This is the real OODA loop. This is uh, what was drawn for us in 1995. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense right now. I get it. It's kind of complicated. I get it. Uh, but we'll unpack this a little bit as uh, they talk about uh, DMT. Uh, to do this, you have to start with uh, something Joe and, and Andrew brought up, and that's control. These entities control you. This DMT controls you. It's, it's from the outside, outside in, bottom up. So we start with the environment. And in fact, John Boyd identified certain features of the world that we just cannot get rid of. We can't eliminate. There is no way out of it, right? And in fact, that's why we named the podcast No Way Out, because of these things we can't get rid of. It. We just can't. We have to continue this world of reorientation. One of the features he identified is entropy. Uh, entropy is kind of loosely connected with uh, surprise. Uh, you'll hear that come up in, in the episode as well. Um, novelty, in fact, uh, if you think about why John Boyd was trying to create the OODA loop or what he's looking for uh, on his journey when he came up with the OODA loop was an understanding how living systems create novelty, how they create new things. Uh, so we have to separate an agent, which is a human, or it could be a machine, or it could be anything. It could be a cell, it could be a neuron, it could be an organization, it could be a team. Um, you put a boundary around it and you create a flow system by putting an inlet and an outlet. So you separate that agent from the environment with a boundary. Um, it's a statistical boundary. It doesn't necessarily exist, but this allows us to understand how systems thrive and survive uh, within their environment. Of course, their environment's on the outside. Um, slap the OODA loop on it. It gets a little confusing. I'll clean that up for you in a second, and we'll get back to some clips from the podcast featuring Andrew Gallimore. Uh, but before we do that, this is a better way to think about the OODA loop. There's no change to the OODA loop. There's no adding a risk model to it. There's nothing changed in here other than identifying a boundary and highlighting the areas of the OODA loop and what they do. So top left, perception. Um, perception is a controlled hallucination. It's constructed top down, inside out. Uh, we do not perceive the world through our sensory organs. That's what Joe Rogan brought up. That's what Andrew Gallimore is going to talk about. Uh, you have prediction. You'll hear them talk about prediction here in a second. Planning and simulation, a dream state. Um, we do not have a high fidelity dream state. You'll hear that in the podcast. 
Uh, that's this area down here. Uh, this is actually part of something known as active inference, uh, as well as the external thing that we do out here. Uh, we actively engage with our environment. We reduce expected free energy, and free energy is another way to think about surprise. And of course, the most important part of this conversation is this thing called a world model. Within the OODA loop, that world model is orientation. Orientation is the Schwerpunkt. It's the focal point of the OODA loop. It determines how we sense, decide, and act. It drives our perception. It drives our intuition and skills, how we predict our planning and simulation. It is a powerful, powerful thing that you need to take away from this episode featuring Andrew Gallimore. Okay, so what does orientation look like? Three levels of orientation include genetics, uh, genetic heritage. That includes things like our biases, our heuristics, the way we're built, things like that, right? Uh, you can get into epigenetics. There, there's other many places you can go with genetics, um, but we won't do that here. The next level is going to be cultural tradition. So think about culture being the language, the symbols, um, the war on drugs is part of our culture, right? That's why um, most of us, and, and I'm not included in that, uh, see psychedelics as being bad, right? And then they, people much rather shove a COVID shot in their body than, and drink alcohol than, than use something natural. I'm not trying to tell you to go use psychedelics, but this is what this episode's about. It's a great way to understand the OODA loop. And the next level is gonna be previous experience. Previous experience includes where you went to school, how much sleep you got last night, what you ate for breakfast, what you ate for dinner last night, um, any type of trauma, positive or negative that you experienced. Uh, were you in a war? Were you in a combat zone? Are you a first responder? And you see things that happen all the time. So those three things mix to determine um, how we see the world. This is the Alpha Omega. This is Destruction and Creation. If you want to learn more about John Boyd's Loop, go read Destruction and Creation now, right after you watch this video. Okay, we'll come back to this animation here in a minute. Let's get back to uh, Andrew Gallimore and Joe Rogan talking about DMT. It's not... If you think about perception in the same way of like looking like a video camera, just t taking imagery, images of the world, that's not how it works. Um, the brain must actively construct a model of, of, of the environment. That's all what it's always doing. It's always constructing a model um, and it is constantly using that model to make predictions um, about um, the way that kind of predictions about the the evolution of sensory information it's constantly saying okay if this is if this model that i'm currently using is good then this should happen next this is the pattern of sensory information that i should receive next so if i for example um move this bottle of water across your your perceptual field even if you close your eyes you could probably tell me where the water's going to be in a couple of seconds because it's it's moving your brain has a model of the water um, and it is using that to make predictions and it's only when something surprising happens you know if the water if i do this and your brain detects um, that there's something uh, its predictions start to fail and you get these error signals and these are what flow into the brain and the brain uses then to kind of update its model until the errors decline so you're never you never have direct access to the world or to the environment should i say you only have direct access to this model that your brain is constructing mm, that's where it gets weird because mm. i'm assuming your model and my model are very similar right that would be if we could ever get to a, a point where we could at least temporarily enter into someone else's consciousness and see how they see the world, yeah. I think we're going to get a lot of answers. We're going to be like, oh, you guys live in a totally <laughs> different fucking world. No wonder why you think we should be communists and we should. <laughs> you know, like, well, it's true, yeah. I mean, every whatever your chemical makeup is, your life experience, your biology, whatever contributing factors, I, I'm a, I always assume that your construction of the world is the same as my construction of the world. But every now and then I'll get a text message from a friend about some world event, and th their take is so crazy that I'll just got to go, wow, this person is living in a completely different world than me. Okay, let's unpack this a little bit. Uh, what Joe is talking about is orientation. Uh, our orientations differ. Like genetics, cultural traditions, previous experience, we're all different. We all see the world from a different lens, if you will. Going back to this, that surprise that they're talking about, that's that new information coming in from your sensory organs. We talked about predictions. This is Bayesian brain predictive processing. The mind is a prediction machine. And again, 
uh, perception. And you can see here, perception is within the boundaries of the OODA loop, right? It, it, we don't perceive the world directly from our eyes. We construct it from that orientation. And that's what this really represents. There's so much more in here. Uh, we can get into active inference, uh, predictive processing, expected free energy, get into ecological dynamics, we get into the perceptual control theory. Everything can be described from this OODA loop. And what I want to do for you now is just take you through an animation of what this kind of looks like as we collect information from the external world. And that's what's going on over here uh, through our observations. Our sensory organs are doing that. They're collecting only that new information, that surprising information. And this is kind of out of order, if you will. This is a nonlinear thing. So what you're seeing here First, this is your Bayesian brain. This is your predictive processing, uh, your predictions down here, your new information up here. The delta between the two, the difference between the two is surprise. The objective of the free energy principle is living systems need to minimize surprise, right? Um, a lot more detail to go into with John Boyd and his mismatches. Uh, the, the point about fifth generation, fourth generation, third generation warfare, uh, cognitive warfare. We get into leadership strategy. So many possibilities with this uh, animation. Um, so they talk about we actively construct. There are two pathways that actively construct. One is internal. That is this pathway here. This is that simulation. This is that plan, that, that course of action, uh, the counterfactuals, the what if scenarios that go on. Uh, uh, the second pathway that emerges here from the right coming from action, uh, this is that part where we actively do something to the environment to get more information from it, right? Uh, to get that feedback, that, that negative feedback loop in there. Don't, don't take this as linear. This is not one step after, after the other. This is happening all the time. It's a nonlinear thing, but I'm describing this for you and showing you an animation so you can understand what the OODA loop really is and, and go back and listen to the Joe Rogan episode featuring Andrew Gallimore. Perception, that's perception right there. Perception is top down, inside out. It's a controlled hallucination, right? Uh, this could also represent your ego or your default mode of, of seeing the world. There's something called the reticular activating system. It filters those things that come in from the outside world. Uh, so many connections to uh, what John Boyd called implicit guidance control between his orientation and observation. Uh, again, um, we could spend time on that on No Way Out looking at all this. And then finally, you're going to see another pathway, very important, especially for those that are into the constraints-led approach, uh, those that are trying to build teaming skills, teamwork skills, what, what have you. Uh, this implicit guidance control pathway, uh, we call it pathfinding right now. It's really about intuition and those adaptive skills that allow you to survive and thrive in an ever-changing environment. So think of like technical skills when you go to school, um, the teaming skills. Everybody wants teaming skills these days. We want to target this uh, in, in the constraints-led approach. Again, you'll have to tune into No Way Out to learn more about the constraints-led approach. But this pathway is absolutely critical when you want to get to that fingertip fill, what John Boyd called finger spitzen gefühl, um, that just that, that feeling, that intuition you have when you're in environment. And it really, really, really drives you into flow states. And I know Joe Rogan likes talking about flow states, especially with his background in fighting and acting. All right. So I'm going to leave it there. A fantastic episode to go watch. Uh, tune into No Way Out. Here's just a few people that have been on the podcast recently from human organizational performance, complex adaptive systems, neuroscience, the constructal law, theory of constraints, uh, how teams actually work, the team science side of things, mission command, uh, high-performing coaches, the free energy principle, active inference, perceptual control theory, all those things that matter in the age of AI, you can condense it down to a simple sketch that represents so much, so much that, uh, I, I, and I make the point all the time that Joe Rogan, every single one of his podcasts, every single episode is about observe, orient, decide, act, and everything in it. I'm Ponch. Check out No Way Out, but first go check out Joe Rogan and Andrew Gallimore on the Joe Rogan Experience.